Uh, was Parrots in game number yeah, one? Yeah, it's yeah, all the same team. Okay, yeah. So it is the same team. Uh, but yeah, Meow was the one who looked strong for me for the first game around through the Sunshine Coast, as we could take a look at their roster right here, which is the same as you have told me. Yep. Shield games up in the top lane. Parrots will be in jungle. Meow in the mid lane. Immobile Ty as AD Carry and Game Shaker 144 on the support. And their opponents on the red side, Krumara Anglican, uh, Anglican College, Ulti up in the top side, Digital D-Star in the jungle, Ward Brother in the mid, Ender Gamer in the bot, and Master Masoon rolling up the support as the uh, team of five for Krumara who's going to try and take down uh, Central Coast today. Yeah, so no subs being utilized by either side. These are the two same teams who went out in the first game and unfortunately fell a little bit short. As you can see, morale is still high. That excitement to be on the stage. Definitely running rampant, showing off how far back these chairs can lean, apparently. Maybe, but you know, can you do this? Yeah. Oh, it's called taking a quick nap before the game gets underway. You've got about, like, 30 seconds, roughly, until picks and bans start, so you might as well... You know, get that power nap in. Make I mean, sure you're rested and refreshed. Our producer loves a good nap. Uh, <laughs> definitely you need to be rested and rejuvenated today. Um, so hopefully he uh, is uh, alive though for this game and staying with us as we are now into the draw. Yeah, into the picks and bans we go. Once again, an immediate Warwick ban against Digital D-Star. I feel as if this might be this jungler's, you know, strongest champion when it's the first ban two games in a row against him. Yeah, I mean, you, that would make sense, right? And LeBlanc taken out against x -Meow. Interesting, we didn't see a LeBlanc ban last game. We didn't see a LeBlanc pick either. So uh, maybe just someone who doesn't like playing against that champion in particular. Vladimir is well taken away from ulti. Yeah, a lot of quick bans at the moment telling me that these two teams are uh, sort of dead. They're scouting. Unfortunately, I believe there was a little bit of an error, perhaps, in the, ring, the uh, champion loadout. So we might be seeing a quick remake of our pick and ban phase. So just to ask you to stick with us for this one. While we get everything you know going underway, why don't you explain to us the importance of the pick and ban phase? Uh, so the pick and ban phase is a stage before every game you go into in League of Legends where you get to select some characters you don't want to play against and of course the character you do. Uh, there's a pool of 143 characters or what we call champions uh, in League of Legends lingo. Uh, and all of them have different uh, roles and abilities and of course uh, different ways of playing the game uh, for the most part of course. So uh, here we have, you know... Uh, Kumra here, you know, banning out these champions. Uh, LeBlanc, Evelyn, and Yumi are the ones taken away. And of course, on the other side, Vygar, Ve uh, sorry, Vygar, uh, Vladimir, and Warwick take off the, uh, the ban phase. And uh, Garen locked in for uh, something like Ghost Grammar. Yeah, I'm not too surprised to actually see this Garen lock in for Shield games. Yes, Garen isn't necessarily the most meta champion or really a strong champion at all, usually in competitive play. However, yeah. it is a comfort pick for Shield games. Unfortunately, we will be seeing that remake come through. I do believe the picks and bans that we saw up until that current moment have been locked in, so they will stay the same. You, you cannot should, yeah. mix it up. Uh, but Garen, I saw Shield Games sort of building pages for this Garen in between the matches, like in preparation. So definitely going to be looking to take that Garen onto the Rift. Yeah, I mean, it looks like one of the computers actually crashed uh, for... Um, <laughs> The, uh, the the blue or red side, sorry, red so side. Kumra. Yep. Uh, so we will just be getting straight back into game once that issue is all fixed up. I believe it was the uh, jungle the digital D star that actually crashed. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, as we are waiting to get back into this game, I mean, obviously Garen locked in already. Silas on the other side too. Uh, you know, champions that are kind of against each other right in the law. Oh the yeah. Legends. So you're gonna see him going head to head, maybe up in that top side. Uh, I think Garen's a very interesting champion. Uh, he did get his first competitive win ever. Yes. Uh, the other day, of course, Garen Yumi bot lane. Um, Yumi's banned out, so we won't see the Garen Yumi, unfortunately. It's a little bit sad, but uh, is what it is. But, um, I mean, especially in Tournament Realm, we can see the God King Garen skin. Fantastically yeah. utilized skin. I think Darius won the uh, the 1v1, but uh, that, that's fine. Um, but I think Garen's a very one-dimensional champion. Um, very good for learning the game. Very simple uh, champion to play. It teaches you a lot about uh, controlling waves, controlling lane, etc. But I think, you know, one of those champions who... Uh, once you get into more advanced levels of play, it's a little bit uh, too simple, yeah. uh, and it's, it's kind of hard to, to uh, really exploit uh, anyone else on the Garen, unless you're really, really proficient on the champion, you play quite a lot of him and uh, can win those matchups, but I mean, once you get above Diamond 4, I think it's very hard to really do anything on the champion. Garen, yeah, he is one of those champions that it's like, like it's purely your own player skill dictates how well you are going to go yeah. on him. But unfortunately, as you go up against people of like equal or greater skill, he just gets punished far too easily. However, at this elo, at this level, Garen is exactly that kind of champion that uh, shield games can play proficiently. Yeah. Will definitely look dominating and it's sometimes possibly even overpowered as back into the picks and bans we go. 
Once again, it is Sunshine Coast Grammar on the blue side. Kumara is on the red side. Um, for those of you who might be confused at the screen that you're looking at by picks and bans, as mentioned before, it's essentially choosing the champions. The champions that you see sort of grayed out at the bottom are what is being banned away. Yeah. Obviously, if you are not too familiar to the game, these are just nameless portraits. And that's A-OK, -okay because guess what? You're not going to be seeing them, so you don't need to learn who they are. Exactly, and we should be uh, rushing through the same picks and bans uh, up to that point until the lobby crash, so everything should be good. And they just wait for these picks to come through. I mean, I would like to see uh, definitely Paris here uh, picking up, you know, one of his stronger champions. Obviously, he did get a uh, different jungler. I don't remember who it was, Ben away, but hopefully he's not picking up that Nunu again. Because uh, Nunu Jungle is definitely a little bit more grief, not gonna lie. I enjoy Nunu Jungle, and I take offense to the fact that you are calling it grief. I think it could be very strong. There's a lot of crowd control, some surprising amount of burst, but it is incredibly hard to pilot, and if you fall behind, uh, it's a bad time to be had. However, where Kumara is heading, that is the Silas as well as the Pike. So we saw Ward Brother on the Pike before. I believe. Yes. Didn't really go the best. Definitely suffering with that lack of wave clear ever since the nerfs, but maybe attempt two will go a bit better. I mean, especially into the Lux from Meow as well, Pike might do a little bit better. I still think he's going to get poked out way too hard, and Pike just doesn't have the wave clear in the early game to ever justify, you know, ever taking him in a solo lane. He's just not good. The only role he works in really is support, um, but it looks like Kumara obviously like that Pike solo lane and will be opting into it again as well as the Nunu. So a very similar draw to last time. Uh, so we'll have to depend and see exactly where they go. Yeah, I mean, so far it's very similar champions coming out for Kumara from what we saw in our second game today. But the big thing, difference is, you know, we still might be seeing that Pike go bot. We still could be seeing Silas actually taken really anywhere because we've seen yeah. all sorts of Silas's today. So the only thing that we know probably for sure is that Nunu is going to be taken into the jungle. Yes. On the side of SE Grandma, though, I'm excited to see Twitch get locked in because Twitch... Very much a Feast or Famine type champion. Either you carry and do fantastic or you struggle and fall behind. What I find interesting, though, is Kumara, in response to the Twitch locked in, banned away the Ash, so they might actually be expecting the Twitch jungle. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it might be a Twitch jungle. You know, last game, Twitch was actually banned away. And I don't think a mobile tie really plays Twitch, and I don't think an AD carry Twitch, even if it's a one trick, is really all that scary. I think it's definitely still beatable. Uh, and a game of picking up the Jinx here was banned away from him last game, so... Uh, maybe a little bit more comfort for him in that bot side, but I still definitely think they should not put this pike in the soil, and I think that's a huge mistake, and they pick the Yasuo. Uh, oh. you see, I mean, maybe it is. Okay. Maybe it could Yasuo be support. Bot? Yeah, it could be a support Lux or... Okay. I'm so confused. All right, so you have... Um, I'm so confused. Some champions playing in some lanes on Sunshine Coast. I'm very curious what we're going to see. I'm assuming it's going to be Meow on the mid with the Lux. Okay. Yeah. Jungle Twitch and, and the bot lane Yasuo for a mobile tie. I mean, into Morgana, not optimal. Morgana's one of the hardest counters to Yasuo. Uh, double heal, though, isn't the best either in the bot lane, but uh, learning players need to uh, you know, experiment and try out different things and come to conclusions by themselves. Uh, I think the Yasuo here, though, is uh, you know, definitely not the best pickup in the bot lane with the comp they've kind of drafted for himself. He hasn't really got any assists in that bot lane. And, you know, if you pair it with something like an Alistair or a Nautilus or an Orn, you know, that can give you that knockup. You can definitely see potential. Uh, but with a Soraka, you know, you have relied on lending those tornadoes yourself, and you can't ever really farm the wave against Morgana. Uh, Morgana's Black Shield uh, kind of obviously negates your your uh, knockup as well. Uh, you also have the pull to constantly poke down Yasuo's wind shield uh, or windbreaker, wind 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 walker. Wind walk? wind, no, no, no. The, the, oh, the, the, yeah, the passive. The passive. I think it's called wind walker. Yeah. Uh, or it could be the exile, whatever it is. Um, but basically, uh, you know, it just it's just unfair on the Yasuo. Like really. Yasuo literally can't do anything in that matchup, and it's. Uh, I mean, I know I've played that much of in the mid lane. You pretty much got to sit there and try to stay alive and get your two items and then just shove the wave and go roam because you just literally can never kill Morgana because she's just anti-fun. I think Morgana is tons of fun, and I love that champion, so I take offense to the notion no, that I think, Morgana I think is playing it, playing it's fun. Playing against it is anti-fun. Yes, okay, that's fair. That's completely fair. I, I enjoy playing Morgana support. I just hate playing against it. <laughs> Because everything I want to play just wants to go for... I mean, actually, Morgana mid, I don't mind playing against when I play Yeah. When I play Yasuo, I want to... Oh, I really, really dislike my time. It's not fun. No, but that said, we are on to the rift. This game is afoot, so people in the crowd, let these high schoolers hear you. It's Sunshine Coast Grammar taking on Kumara.
In Gain a five man invade from the red side, so that two games in a row. A little bit of a style call there from Game Check. We'll get a bit of poke down, so they will be spotted out, but unfortunately, nothing else will come of it. I just think the uh, Blood Moon skin this time being brought out by Ward Brother. Last time it was the uh, the Project Pike skin. New skin. I, I, I like the Project Pike skin. I yeah, I nice think it's skin. cool. I think it's pretty cool. But um, Blood Moon definitely looking slightly good. But uh, good invade here on the top side from Sunshine Coast Grammar. Moving in. Seeing all five members there. Getting that deep order. It looks like Twitch is going to try to cheese away this red buff. Twitch always wants to start red, of course. Uh, means he'll be able to get that cheeky gank off. Uh, into the mid lane level 2, he mm -hmm. loves to do Q plus W, I believe, is the uh, correct ordering of skills for the slow. Uh, but of course, I have to see exactly what Twitch goes with here, as he might be spotted out by ulti. Yeah, I, this is definitely a kind of dangerous situation. I do believe Kumara has an understanding of what SC Grammar is probably going to be doing, only because they have not yet seen Parrots on the bot side of the map. They are aware, okay, Twitch is probably going to be starting red. So we're going to be seeing an interesting situation where each jungler is going to be starting on the opposite end of the map in their enemy side of the map as well. Risky start for both sides typically, but with that much resources actually committed to the bot side for Kumara, I actually believe Sunshine Coast kind of come out on top in this one. Yeah, I mean, and Sunshine Coast, of course, you know, also, I mean, they should just put them out vertically, right? They should just start farming towards uh, both those lanes. You see the Yasuo just playing so defensively. Ooh, on the interesting early gank from Paris. Gets the flash out of Ward Brothers. So Sunshine Coast taking advantage of sort of the obscure pathing. However, with that Paris, it's going to be going to the bot side of the map where he's already been invaded a bit. I'm a little bit disappointed in that. Now he's going to see, okay, we have traded red buffs, so... Unfortunately, a bit behind, and because, you know, he hasn't been farming, that is a small lead for Digital d -Stock. Up Tart, however, Ulti going after Shield Game, connects with the chains, forcing this Garen out of lane quite quite aggressively. I think Garen could have turned that trade around and actually taken it uh, onto the Silas, though. I think uh, the Silas was, you know, not uh, probably the best position to go for that. It's not if I think I was a Garen, I would just turned around and, and tried to do some damage back on the other side. I also think in this bot lane, you know, Yasuo and Soraka are still level 1 to level 2 of Kumaru despite uh, them leashing. Uh, ulti as well here is... Uh, wow. Winning the trades against Shield Games, but now out of mana on this Stylus means he will have to back very soon or just sit in lane without any mana. Low HP uh, could be very dangerous. You can see Shield Game picking up a solo key here very quickly. Yeah, definitely a kind of situation where this Garen to try and turn around, flashing aggressively onto Ulti. Ulti's like, okay, thanks, I'll turn that around. I have the help from the minions. Shield game's nearly falling in that fight. Meanwhile, yeah, going into stun in the mid lane. Sorry to cut you off. A bit of action left, right, and center. Ward Brother in a bit of trouble. No flash, and once again, Parrots is here. The Luminous Binding connecting. Parrots with that red buff doing so much work, and there is your first blood going to the Sunshine Coast. Yeah, once again, Twitch coming through that gank in the mid lane. Unfortunately, burning his flash earlier, Ward Brother. Uh, was actually going to comment on that. You know, very commonly, whenever I play against a Twitch jungle, I know he's going to come mid level two. They do it every single game. It's a red buff, Q, uh, stealth, just as I get to Raptor Pit and walk in behind the lane. Uh, unfortunately, Ward Brother, you know, maybe hasn't played against Twitch jungle that much or isn't experienced in the matchup, but I just know uh, from, uh, you know, doing the wrong thing and getting caught out by Twitch jungle level one that many times that it is a very common thing to do and you should just always play safe early on unless you know where that Twitch is. Uh, just expect him to be behind you and invisible. Something similar to this, Ulti now get feeling the power of that Twitch. The recall was delayed, so buying a bit more time for shield uh, games to sort of try and catch back up in this top lane. It's already been a pretty rough game for this Garen, so that extra bit of buffer to farm some CS, get some gold, will be very beneficial. Game Shaker actually stepping forward. He got hit by the Zap, and now the Dark Binding. The pool coming down as well. This Soraka needs to be careful. Kumra nearly had an opportunity to turn that on him. Yeah. Soraka, one of the squishiest characters in the game, especially since she hasn't opted for barrier either. Generally, if you take a Soraka, uh, you need to take barrier as your own just for survivability because she's just so squishy and gets blown up so quickly. Uh, the Ignite's a very aggressive summoner spell, especially in an unfavored lane matchup. So uh, maybe uh, you know a lack of summoner choice might cost her here and uh, could potentially play back to Kumra. But I think Kumra's bot lane, you know, we saw in the last game, is a very passive lane. And and I don't think they know how to really exploit the champions they've picked for and, and try and take over the game. So uh, potentially Sunshine Coast Grammar could actually survive with this bot lane and, and get to their mid game where they want to actually start, you know, fighting. But I mean, the matchup is just so bad for them that, you know, that Ender Gamer and uh, Master Monsoon can really put some pressure on here if they actually choose to and start abusing their champions. But again, it literally just depends. Yeah, it was quite a bit of shield games. Once again, stepping up aggressive against Ulti. However, Ulti with that level advantage actually will come off better following that trade. And 
really both in the top and the AD carry like ball lane right now. CS going Kumara's way. However, Shield Games just playing so aggressive. He's wanting to fight the Silas again and again. Ulti happy to take these trades for the most part, but each of them are getting quite low and neither have help coming anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, Silas has Conqueror, so he's always going to win these extended trades, and he also has more ability, so he's going to win the burst trades as well. So, I mean, unless Guy can get the silence off at this initially, and then, you know, start comboing it up, I think, you know, this is a, you know, very Silas heavy favorite matchup, and I think uh, just needs to really know that and then start playing around it or playing around these mini waves correctly. And as you can see, the CS is just kind of ballooning up in the top side. I also had like Monster Monsoon as soon as he see him step up in this bot lane. He's just kind of sitting so far back in this Morgana, which he did last game as well, right? Uh, with the range and poke advantage. He needs to play more aggressive and really assert his dominance over the range. He's kind of walking up, throwing over Dark Binding, then walking back. And it's just very passive and just very uh, inefficient play overall from uh, the Kumara bot lane. Despite having this massive uh, matchup advantage, like he should be abusing this and you know, getting two or three kills already. We see once again Shield Gamer doing a fair bit of damage against Ulti, continuing to fight whenever the opportunity presents itself. What I find interesting though is yes, it does look like, you know, this bot lane for the Sunshine Coast is doing alright as a nice block there with that win while stopping the zap. When you look at the crowd score, or sorry, the uh, creep score in the bot side right now, 19 to 36, it is still Ender Gamer getting those advantages and starting to pull away. There could be a kill or two perhaps, but I don't know. I feel, I do agree, I wouldn't mind seeing more aggression. I do feel as if Kumara could get away with it, but it's not as if they're doing poorly in that bot lane. A bit of a gank happening, however, as War Brother coming down, connects with the hook, forcing that flash out of Game Shaker. Nothing more is going to come from that, though. But with Flash down now on that Soraka, definitely we're going to be seeing more aggressive play, right? I mean, you hope so. Uh, oh, Parrots is now down here to try and counter yeah. him, but Ward Brother's still around on the back. Oh, a lot of damage has been thrown back onto Parrots, and here comes Ward Brother flashing in, gets the stun down onto Game Shaker. Down goes the Soraka, and Kumara ties the kill score up. Unfortunately, Ward Brother not getting his ultimate onto the Soraka. She died to the electric crew proper before he could get that extra goal down. So that will be now on quarter, and I think. I mean, War Brother's biggest strength we saw from last game was obviously his roaming, right? He, he does roam around on this pike, and it, it's more of a support pike than a mid lane pike. The playstyle he takes, he doesn't really uh, CS, he doesn't really, you know, dominate lane, but he moves around the map and tries to get, to get and tries to help get picked with his ultimate uh, and with his moves around the map. But again, talking about that bot lane CS lead, I mean, it is definitely going to get a large lead, like 50 to 21, but I think it's also because of uh, Immobile's uh, interesting strategy when it comes to farming minions. He's kind of throwing his Qs out whenever he has them, uh, not really waiting to get those minions low enough, and, and also not stepping up when they back. Like, the fact that Morgana and Jinx are playing so passive means that uh, so Yasuo is, should be stepping up, and Yasuo is playing as if they are playing, you know, as they should be, like, very aggressively trying to force him off waves. Uh, but it just, that's just not what's happening right now. He has the ability to step up, take these waves, take this farm, and start you know, actually trading into them because the Morgana is playing so passively. Ooh, Luminous binding into the final spark, secures the kill. A great roam from the Sunshine Coast, and they want more. Flash doesn't matter. Two kills going back over to the Sunshine Coast. Super Mega Death Rocket does not connect, but here comes Ward Brother. He gets the hook onto Meow. This Lux is quite squishy, but with help from Parrots, it's Ward Brother who's in trouble. He was held in place trying to get to that blasting cone and should just escape this time yeah barely getting away the, the uh, pike just escaping as he does uh, i feel like sunshine goes grammar uh, you know kind of creeping ahead in this game despite uh, being so far behind in the bot lane uh, and the top lane as well right like this silas is so far ahead of the garen but uh, just these players aren't you know properly utilizing their matchups they're not playing around these lanes correctly not playing aggressive when they should be playing aggressive not playing passive when they should be playing passive uh, and just not tracking anybody and it's like they're just getting caught out and punished yeah, and you have to look to Digital D Star to try and turn things around for Kumara in this sense. When you take a look at the jungle difference so far in this one, Parrots has had a much larger impact in this game. And while, yes, lanes are going Kumara's way, they need that little bit extra oomph, I suppose, to really start taking this game over. Yeah. That said, though, for SC Grammar, they can only continue with this pace for so long. Eventually, those lanes are going to take over this game with one facet or another as Game Shaker is in a bit of trouble. Ward Brother coming down will connect with the stun onto the choppers. There is no chance for Game Shaker to escape. And now a mobile tie has to burn flash in order to try and get out. The zap will slow. Looking for that hook. It connects. Ender Gamer can't quite follow up. No zap was available just yet. So barely surviving is a mobile tie. Meow has roamed down as well as Parrots, but there's no fight that they actually want. Up top as well, more trades going down. Shield Gamer and Ulti once again smacking each other with their big blunt objects. Shield Gamer actually going in quite deep, but those caster minions throwing a lot of damage back down onto this Garen who has to back away. 
Yeah, Shield Games again taking bad trades up in this top side and falling a little bit further behind than I mean what he should. Unfortunately, Jinx missing the Super Mega Death Rocket once again on a low health target, so isn't able to pick up that kill on the Yasuo, who definitely should have gone down, but uh, didn't do so. A very uh, slow, or oh, not slow, but just a very uh, interesting game between these two sides. It's a very much a, a more controlled pace, a very uh, slow game. I think this is going to be a, a very long game. Yeah, this could be one of those longer games. Good hook right there from Ward Brother. However, it's all they're trying to do is buy time to bring down this Mountain Drake. Meow up above. Connects with the Luminous Fighting and a big final spark takes down the Jinx. Another kill goes down as Master Masoon dies. Yes, the Dragon is secured, but at what cost? Digital D-Star is going to be able to escape as a bit of a snipe attempt was coming from Ulti. Here comes the ultimate from Nunu. It does not do much. It is four down on the side of Kumara. A huge fight for the Sunshine Coast. Yeah, Sunshine Coast really getting ahead here. You see the, their strengths lie in their fights. Uh, their laning's not the best, right? They're a little bit further behind in CS. Their lane matchups aren't going great, but when they group up as a team, they're using their champions together, and especially Meow on this Lux is carrying these teams. Yeah, it's definitely been going very well at the moment for Sunshine Coast Grammar. They have a small lead, but maybe with those kills, they'll be able to get that momentum and start to propel things in their favor. Parents on the Switch has been doing a fantastic job just arriving when needed, getting these kills secured, and Meow on this Lux, second game in a row, but this time looking much stronger. Yeah, I mean, definitely having that a uh, better lane matchup and also, you know, having maybe a, not a, a strong of a side to play against means uh, the mistakes she makes aren't as punished. I mean, she you know, can shine as probably the best player in this game so far, and I think uh, that'll only continue as the game gets later on. Yeah, definitely could be the instance in this one. I definitely am looking towards Kumara's um, fuel team to really start trying to bring things back, as well as Ender Gamer. I mean, when we're taking a look at these CS differentials in lanes, they're so catastrophically different. It's like, eventually, that's going to come back to bite Sunshine Coast, right? Uh, I mean, you'd, you'd think so, but I mean, maybe not, because, you know, once these kills uh, start oh. piling up, it could definitely go the other way. It could, but with Ward Brother warming up top, yes, they get the flash out of Shield Gamer. Can they get more flashing aggressively, helping secure us a kill? Kumara back on the board. Yeah, Kumara again, getting a kill back to their side again. Another fantastic roam there from Ward Brother to take advantage of the, uh, <laughs> the gang up at the top side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that win wall just... Uh, you know, blocking blocking the uh, the tormented soil. Yeah, yeah, you gotta. Blo it's blocking the potential follow up. It's buying time. Not every win wall has to be that clutch. You know, yeah. ability stopping thing. Sometimes you just need to zone and say, you know what? Don't even bother trying. We have this covered. Yeah, most Paris. definitely, and you see another gank here from Paris in the bot side. Yeah, again, he's looking for Ender Gamer, gets a fair bit of damage Pops down, a nice spell shield's gonna buy some time, as well as the Chomper still, the damage out of Parrots was a bit ridiculous, and with the bot lane pushed out, that could mean probably a bot tower should Parrots stick around, but instead he's actually looking more towards this mid lane, perhaps. Digital D-Star on his own, at least momentarily, this new new needs to be careful. Yeah, I mean, Twitch now, Twitch Jungle, definitely starting to scale up. Twitch is obviously oh, one of the best late the game Oh, the Luminous yeah. Binding into the final spark with the DPS coming from the Twitch. Brings down Digital D-Star yet again. Yeah, I mean, yeah, as I was saying, you know, Twitch here is one of the strongest... Oh, dude, just flashed. <laughs> oh, God. Twitch just, uh, you know, we had a... Sometimes there's an issue in League of Legends when you press the wrong key and your keyboard by accident. You, yes, I You burn your flash. It's happened to me many times before. It's an unfortunate incident I hate for Parrots, but he should be okay. Uh, and the Twitch can sit in the jungle farm for a couple minutes and come back out when his flash is back and ready to go. But, you know, this Twitch here, you know, now that he's completed the jungle item, got the extra attack speed, he's going to start building towards uh, Arunan's Hurricane, and he'll be doing a lot of damage, especially once his IE is completed in Twitch jungle. You know, obviously Twitch, one of the most better scaling champions in the game. Uh, unfortunately, unable to really uh, get in and do anything here on this gank in particular. But yeah, Twitch can, uh, you know, carry later into the game. And so uh, even if he's not uh, doing a lot proactively, which is, you know, Twitch jungle's general, uh, what he does, he gets a really great level one, two, three, he does a lot. Uh, it does nothing for the next, you know, 10, 15 levels. As he uh, gets to level 18 and gets those late game items ready to go, and then he really pops up again. Ward Brother again on the roam, gets the Sundown onto a mobile tie, the Zap onto Parents though with the Chompers, should be enough to really stop Ooh. this counter engage. A snipe from Yao with the final spark though, finds the kill onto Master Masoon. And oh, a near kill picked up as well for Ulti up top. Finally we see that giant snowball, will it come into play? Unfortunately not. 
that W just barely keeping Garen alive there from the top side. Ulti could have definitely looked for a kill, but unfortunately did not get one. But on the other side of the map, down in this bot side, uh, fantastic snipe from Miel roaming down, also following Ward Brother and getting that ward as the top lane tower now goes down. Yeah, so the first tower actually going over to Kumara, who, despite being down nine kills to three, have a bit of a gold lead. And this is what I was talking about with that, like, lane CS and it coming back to bite the Sunshine Coast. Yeah. Despite them getting the kills, despite them controlling the tempo, they're falling a, a bit too far behind up top and down below, really. And the gold is actually quite even. Yeah, I mean, Kumara actually have a 1,000 gold lead, despite being technically behind in the game overall, right? They've just got less tempo. I mean, they more tower, but, you know, they're... Kills are more to Sunshine Coast. I mean, Sunshine Coast, like, technically Kumar are ahead uh, in, in all methods of the game, but just the tempo control is actually on the side of Sunshine Coast grammar. And uh, when we talk about tempo control, we talk about the pace of the game. So how fast is the game being made? Who's making the plays? Who's dictating where people have to go and how they have to go? And I think that is solidly in, uh, in the hands of Sunshine Coast grammar, and more particularly Parrot and Meow. Yes, but I do see a world in which Kumara starts to take the tempo back, and that is when Teleport becomes available once again for ulti up yeah. on that top side, which will be in the next 30 seconds or so. That is something that, you know, the Sunshine Coast has to respect because of how far ahead this Silas actually is. Ocean Drake looking to be secured by Grammar, and now they might be getting a kill off the back end as well. Digital D-Star got a little bit too close for comfort there, is able to walk away. Yeah, Digital D start not getting much there. I mean, Digital D start is one of those, you know, Nuna obviously a great stealer of uh, any buffs that consume smite, uh, one of the best containers of neutral objectives. So no matter what stack the game gets to, you'd always uh, give Kumara a chance to steal oh, the major objective. Oh, that's a big dark binding right there onto Paris. They found the Twitch. Can't get out of it as he's hooked back in a huge shutdown going over to Ward Brother right there. And that's a significant chunk of gold. Not something to stop at. It's up top. There's a bit of action happening, but more importantly, down below, Immobile Tai gets hooked back into the team, but Meow on the backside is able to pick off Ender Gamer. Yes, Immobile Tai falls, but that turns into a one-for-one one down bot. Kumara not done yet, trying to chase down more players as Shield Gamer in a lot of trouble. Ulti staying on this, Garen will find that kill as well, and Kumara fighting back into this one. Yeah, Kumara starting to get some kills back on the board here. 2k gold overall. I think Ulti up in this top side is you know, the main uh, driver for them. He's super far ahead. I think Pike as well able to pick up kills. Uh, not able to farm uh, minions, but uh, given the fact he's able to take the uh, kills on these ultimate, get him so much gold uh, that it doesn't actually matter that he's behind him. Probably, it's probably even uh, in uh, gold with this. Oh, actually, maybe not Lux. has a little bit of gold, actually. But those three kills the Pike has is actually a, the same as having the six on the Lux because you get double the gold right when you kill someone with your ultimate. Uh, I believe he's only gotten... Oh, actually, maybe he's only got five kills, but here we go from Paris. Oh, a quick flash out of Ward, brother. Will keep him alive, but Parrot's definitely happy with that little roam right there. And I really see this game teetering on a nice edge. It's going to turn into Meow and Parrots versus Ulti and Ward Brother. Yeah. The way how this is going. And that's going to lead to some explosive team fights. So those are the four players that you are going to be wanting to watch as we move later into this one. Because if either of those four fall, that could be the team fight going in the opposite team well, fight. Well, see, it's Ulti and Ward Brother feet end the gamer because Jinx is quite strong, right? 100 CS, Infinity Edge completed, does a fair bit of damage. Yasuo opting for PD first. Um, Interesting item on, on Yasuo hasn't really been built since patch what? Well, when I'm playing team fight tactics and I see an infinity edge on a Jinx, the first thing I'm doing is building a Phantom Dancer. This is true. Yeah. But this isn't TFT. This is a... Uh, true. True. This is, this is League of Legends. I mean... And Yasuo needs his 45% attack speed to get the max CD on his Q. <laughs> um, and the uh, Phantom Dancer unfortunately does not provide oh, that anymore. a great... Binding and pick from Meow right there. Ward Brother did not see that one coming, and that is huge for this Lux. Yeah, Lux here, you know, 7 0 on this uh, champion. Got the magic pen coming through as well. Uh, also, going to need to see the drops. So, a lot of AP overall for their side, and a Rift Tower picked up could. Uh, definitely turn the tides in their favor. Uh, definitely could be used to grab a tower in that mid lane and start really opening up the map themselves. Yeah, they really want to get me out, starting to roam and like really applying this huge lead that she has in other parts of the map. As we are continuing right now, however, still bot lane has been stuck in limbo. Like neither side really getting a large advantage in terms of lane control. Thus far, unless junglers have arrived, both of those bot side towers super healthy, so that potentially could be another place where Parrots would look to push his advantage. 
I would prefer to end the mid lane as a bit of an interesting situation is happening up top. It's a huge dark finding actually connects. The choppers come down as well. Up top, the gank is pulled. Ulti is being targeted up there, and the damage will help bring him down. Shield gets that one down below. Super Mega Death Rocket is body blocked by Game Shaker, but is hit by the zap. Has to flash somehow, survives. Wow, that was tight. Omis flashed in and killed the Yasuo with the AoE from the Rockets. <laughs> that would have been pretty funny. Oh! If that did end up happening. A flash off to the War back from the Rebel Tide. Trying Whoa. to get there just a bit too short with that last hook, but now they need to be careful because Meow has roamed down. Here comes the final spark! It's half shots, Master Masoon! This Lux is giant as up top the Rift Herald was dropped, and they get two towers in that area of the map. SC Grammar, they are everywhere. Sunshine Coast Grammar definitely still falling here, but Kuma as well are uh, going for so many aggressive plays, but unfortunately not landing them. I mean, I just... I, I don't know what to say about this game. It's very hard to break down and analyze because there's a lot of uh, non-meta uh, coming through from both these sides. I think Shirelli's Reverie Rush on, uh, on the uh, Morgana <laughs> with uh, Moby Boots. Uh, is this peculiar? Yeah. I think, uh, well, what's not peculiar is this damage Meow can throw down. Legendary is this Lux. The mid tower will fall right after. What I am most impressed about with this game so far is just this, like how close it actually is in terms of gold. This has yeah. been our closest match at the Eka yet, but SC Grammar is definitely looking to try and pull away, nearly catching out Ulti there, forcing out that defensive flash. Really, Kumra, they feel too scared to just approach this Sunshine Coast team. Yeah, I feel like both both teams seem a little bit scared of each other, and it's pretty much just Meow just because she has so much range using her abilities in the band just to nuke down whoever, you know, kind of missteps a little bit. And I, I think that's the benefit of having Lux in this game. I feel like the champion's really just thriving because everyone is just playing so, I don't want to say poorly, but just so defensively or so... Um, Reactively. Reactively. The, Reactively. The, the, the fact that this Lux can just sit back, throw these skill shots out and just do so much damage uh, and do that really heavy poke which oh. can't really be answered means that uh, Sun Sunshine Coast Grandma are just kind of going to walk this game because uh, neither team really knows how to play their champions, really how to pull the triggers or actually how to play the game. Yeah, I mean definitely so far if we're looking at, you know, the person who knows their champions the best, it would be Meow and Parents. Yeah. I do feel as if they each are utilizing their champion correctly for the most part. Ward Brother as well on this pike, yes, it's kind of more of a supporty pike. I kind of wish he was playing support instead of mid lane as yeah. a result. I think he has a real grip on what he's doing. But I do kind of agree, aside from that, it's really just been a bit of, you know, chaos everywhere, with neither team really able to wrestle a strong control. Lux, yes, is fantastic and can burst out single targets, but can't win a game on her own. Yeah. She does need support from the team, and that's why I'm looking towards Paris. I'm looking towards Immobile Tide to maybe give this Lux a bit more support as Paris trying to do what he can with the ultimate, but walk right into the stun from Ward Brother. Unfortunately for Kumara, not enough damage to be able to be thrown back onto this Twitch, so they're not going to find the kill in this instance. The rest of the team was busy resetting. It's just... I feel opportunities are getting set up for Kumaro, but no yeah. one's there to take advantage of them. Uh, I mean, I definitely have to agree with C. Oh, whoa! Ward Brother going in super deep is unable to find Parrots. Yes, gets some damage, but he throws the ultimate backwards and falls! The prediction did not come true. Meanwhile, on the back end, Meow gets a huge kill on the Master Masoon, and the rest of the Sunshine Coast is here. Digital D start trying to run away. The Choppers will help buy some spacing, and with that, only two fall, but... Oh, he was going for that hero play, just, you know, didn't connect. That was just very unfortunate. That classic throw, uh, the skill shot, and part of Project the Flash, but unfortunately, Parrots with no flash <laughs> uh, couldn't flash into uh, the prediction, so uh, unlucky Ward Rally just ended up looking a little bit silly there, which is unfortunate. Happens to the best of us, but looks like Sunshine goes Grandma moving straight onto the Baron. Yeah, this could be a little bit risky, however, Smite is still available for Digital Z-Star, and they have that Blasting Cone there, so it's easy enough to get into the pit. Sunshine Coast Grammar, they're not really willing to commit to this Baron. They're sort of, I think, anticipating the fight, but Kumara, they have vision. They're gathering around. Here comes the final spark. It nearly takes down Digital D-Star, and all of a sudden, this jungler is low. They need to be very careful. Baron's quite low. We saw one steal earlier. D-Star gets in there, but does not take it. SC Grammar secures the Baron and gets a kill right off the bat as Shield Games takes down this Nunu. The rest of Kumara on the run right now. Parrots is there, though. So much damage from the switch. He'll take down Ulti. So with two kills down, Baron on the side of Sunshine Shows Grammar. Their eyes are going to be set on some inhibitors. Yeah, I mean, enough of the inhibitors. Just the game itself. Kumara very low overall across the board. Uh, not really able to do much, uh, you know, against this Baron in particular. I think 
Uh, I mean, the other problem is this, I don't know if Sunshine Coast Grandma actually set up to utilize this Baron either. They definitely need to split the map. Uh, and, and oh my up. gosh, yes, the hook was there, but the damage from Meow was too much for Ender Gamer. Another kill picked up by this Lux, and that is another tower falling. Unfortunately, a bit disorganized in the reset, so Sunshine Coast unable to keep the pressure really on at the moment. That is a fast Nunu. That is one fast Nunu. <laughs> Where's he getting so all these movements here? Just the ball, right? I, yeah, that was the ball out of Fountain. Oh, so that's why it's 0 40. Right. Yeah. Just honestly, like, the only time I've ever played Nuno is I went 0 40. Um, I was playing mm. Cleanse Ghost Nuno support. I had a nice time. It was very fun. Yeah, well, I, I think um, that's not how you play Nunu. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm just going to go on a limb here and say uh, 0 40, 0 Nunu is probably. Uh, the worst way to play Nunu. Oh really? I I, I enjoyed playing. It was yeah. quite fun. I did mute my chat though, so maybe that would have helped. Yeah, I mean, I imagine they had some very uh, unnice things to say about you in that one. Uh, that said, back to the game at hand. Sunshine Coast, within the past three or four minutes, have now pulled to a 5k gold lead. They have the bear, and this power play is looking quite strong for them. Cheeky little hook from Ward Brothers. Not going to lead too much, but... Kumara, they're grouped as five. They're trying to defend. They have the wave clear from Ender Gamer. Is there a fight that they can still win? Uh, Kumara? Yeah, of course there is. Oh, um, a pick onto a mobile tie can lead to it. So Yasuo does fall down. Good play from Ward Brother. But the final spark as well as that rat tat tat The damage dealers from SC Grammar take two right back. Look, yeah, Kumra can definitely still win a fight if Pike gets a good ultimate reset off and then kills multiple members and gets a good ult chain. Um, but besides that, Twitch and Lux just have way too much damage, and Jinx just can't do damage and or can't right click. So, uh, no damage is really going to come out of you know this late game carry for Kumra. Uh, so, it's going to be very difficult for them to really uh, try to contest these fights. Yeah, definitely, especially when they are two men down against, you know, SC Grammar's one. So it's a 4v3, but the Baron Empowered Minions are doing a lot of work against that tower. My goodness, Meow, it's a snipe after snipe from this Lux. 13-0 and 7? This is ridiculous. Yeah, a little bit of damage there. Oh my, legendary. Another one. Meow just unstoppable, forcing out that flash from ulti, like Kumra, they get anywhere near and all of a sudden it's just a giant laser taking up half across like the map and half the screen is red and then your health is gone. I mean, especially because the cooldown on it is so low, obviously level 14, 40% uh, oh no, still 20% CDR. I yeah. mean, Lux cooldown, Lux ulti is just not cooldown, it's so low. Uh, See, it's like it's almost up again. Yeah, I mean, it's up again, up again. Ulti went ahead and dropped the final spark of its own having stolen that ultimate. And Mobile Tai going a bit too far forward, forced to flash defensively. One thing I have to be critical of, though, in terms of the Sunshine Coast, is they're really not getting a push going. They are getting snipe after snipe. Ulti barely dodging that one. It would have brought him down. And that is the world's most pitiful new new snowball right there. I am not going to lie. Digital D Star immediately recognizing that's probably a bad idea. I probably shouldn't roll it in there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 0 5. Could be better. It could be like 0 10, 0 12. Right. Yes. Um, oh, a bit of engage happening right here. This could be an opening that Kumura wants. They take down the Yasuo and Shield Games on the run. Will get slowed by that zap and pulled back into the rest of the team. Two quick kills for Kumura, and all of a sudden this offensive play from the Sunshine Coast has to be delayed. Yeah, 23 kills to 9, but only 4k gold down. And that's just because of the gold differences uh, in the solo lanes. Is the, the, the other, uh, sorry, Sunshine Coast Grammar's AD carry and top just kind of don't want to CS. Oh, wow. That is a quick flash being burned by Ender Gamer, not wanting anything to do with parrots. And, like, I have to give credit to Kumara in this one. It felt like this game was snowballing out of control roughly five minutes ago, but their defense has held strong, and I don't know if that's a case of the Sunshine Coast really being unable to further push their advantages as much as it's been Kumra unable to really to play anything. But this game, we're going to be approaching the 30 minute mark. I believe this is our first 30 minute game here at the Eka. It's yeah. definitely been our closest match so far and it could still go either way. Yeah, it's interesting it's a close match with 23 to 19 kills. Yes. Like my god, that gets a huge lead, but that's just the importance of farming and gold. We have a flame horizon in top lane, almost a flame horizon in bot lane, and a flame horizon in mid lane to the other side. <laughs> so uh, it's pretty much just a case of one person CS, the other team doesn't CS. Uh, but the CS leads are actually keeping them even in gold uh, because it's just, oh, I mean, not even, it's still 4k now, which is a lot of gold, but uh, you know, it's still very even. You know, there are like, you know, a thousand gold or one and a half thousand gold in bounties 
uh, that you can collect. Obviously, you see those little gold values above the uh, two middle figures. If you kill them, you get that gold on top of a kill. Yep. So if you kill the Lux, that's a thousand gold. Uh, if you kill the Twitch, nine hundred and fifty gold, which is a significant portion. And Lux is probably so fed that it's probably actually if you kill her once, you get seven hundred gold, and kill her again, and probably get another you know, five or six hundred gold as well on top of that. Uh, Three hundred you get for the kill. Ward brother, kind of scouting the situation out. Maybe looking for a potential pick. Has some help with Digital D-Star. The hook connects and it's on to Paris. This is a lot of damage that's about to be thrown down onto this Twitch. But he turns it around with help from Meow. A huge kill picked up. Two, in fact, for the Sunshine Coast. And with those two there, Baron might be on the table. Yeah, Twitch and Lox are just massive. You just can't really do anything against them. Just because of the style that Kuma is playing. They're playing so defensively and so... Uh, passively. Uh, there's oh, so Harris. much damage coming out from both these characters. They just can't oh, get he got hit by the Dark Binding and is unable to escape. So an aggressive flank from Parrots does get punished. And that will hurt Sunshine Coast's ability to sort of clear these waves and keep the offense going. But Ulti going super deep, able to get some cheeky damage and walk away. Risky positioning from Kumara. Yeah, Kumara, you know, starting to play up a little bit. Maybe getting a little bit more aggressive. Oh, mobile, oh but forward. hit with the Luminous Binding has to use the Azanias. Will he turn this one around? However, Mobile Tide trying to take down Silas is unable to do so. But another Luminous Binding forces the flash out of War Brother. Doesn't matter. Ender Gamer's on the flank trying to get those autos down. But Meow's going to turn it right back around onto this Jinx. No final start available. And Meow is too far forward. Ulti is able to jump on to this Lux who has to bruise barrier and get away. No one falling just yet. Shieldkin did fall on the backside. My apologies. Ulti is jumping onto a mobile tie who's burns flash. And a huge luminous binding gets Ulti underneath the tower. And they will turn it around. Game Shaker with that clutch kill. The Super Mega Death Rocket unable to find that snipe. And in the end, it's one for one. Yeah, one for one. Paris back up again as well. So uh, Baron also respawning will be the second one if Sunshine Ghost Grandma choose to go and pick that up, which is a very powerful buff overall. And to be honest, I think it could be game ending with the Twitch and the loss. Yeah, but that's if they can get it. Unfortunately, like the positioning for um, Sunshine Coast, like it hasn't been there. We haven't seen that proper 5v5 fight that I believe Sunshine Coast want. And later into this game, the more items that Ender Gamer gets, this Jinx might prove to be like an unkillable raid boss at this stage. I don't know. Who do you think is a better late game carry, Twitch or Jinx? Jinx has more sustain. Twitch can pop and like take a couple people out, but then if they jump on the Twitch, Twitch is gone. I think Jinx with the sort of peel, natural peel that she can have, not to mention build wise going for that Bloodthirster now yeah. will be like so hard to bring down. Plus you have the area effect from the rockets. I would honestly say Jinx is Okay, fair enough. I mean, I definitely think Twitch is a little bit stronger when it gets to that full actually like six item AD carry. Oh yeah, I mean um, Twitch can pop out and like destroy an entire yeah, yeah. team, but you have to be in the right position. If you're yeah, in the course, wrong position, yeah. you are gone. I think Jinx gives a bit more flexibility and a bit more leeway for what you're trying to do. And in a game like this, I think the Jinx actually has the potential to be stronger. Yeah, but then the only thing you have to think about is also, uh, you know, in, in this ELO, is individual player skill, right? You think mm -hmm. Parrots' is, uh, Twitch or Ender Game's Jinx is better? Well, the last team fight that we saw, Parrots tried to flank, got caught out, and died. This is true. So well, it wasn't here. He just went for a little. Well, he went for like a one v three. One v three. Yeah, that said, Baron has been started by the Sunshine Coast. Ward Brother has vision on it, and Sunshine Coast aware that Kumar is around. Might try to back up. The stun falls through onto Game Shaker, but a giant final spark kind of forces Master Masoon and Ward Brother down. A huge ultimate coming from this Nunu is not enough to turn things in the favor of Kumara. Four kills in favor of the Sunshine Coast, and that might end this game. Yeah, and we see the two of them going head to head. End the games and Parrots here getting oh, slow. Here we go. go, Jinx versus Twitch, and it's Jinx who flashes defensively. Parrots over the wall, finds the ace, and this will be Baron for the Sunshine Coast. Well, they should just end the game. Let's not take the Baron, they should just run down mid, clear the wave, and just end the game. They don't actually need to get this Baron buff. Uh, it's just delaying time and letting uh, Kuma get their respawns up. I mean, they will eventually take it out, right? But Twitch is in here, it's the main DPS carry. Uh, Yasuo as well doesn't do any damage because he's just super far behind on items. Doesn't even have an IE yet finished. And Parrot's uh, unfortunately unable to utilize the, uh, the blast cone there. Yeah, Parrot's tried to blast cone over the wall to help out his team. Kind of just went right into the wall and did a little dance as opposed to taking the long walk of shame. But needs to be careful because here comes Ward. Brother, not going to find the Twitch this time around. Baron has been secured by the Sunshine Coast. It is their second Baron of the game. And with that, perhaps, they might find that push to end this one. It is amazing to me that Kumara has two Flame Horizons in their favor. A rare feat in League of Legends, and yet they are still behind in this game. It's... Uh, yeah. look, look, Amateur League of Legends is fun. 
exciting and you see a lot of new things. Uh, especially at the beginner level, but uh, obviously all these players due to the game getting involved and you, so you yourself can get involved if you head over to uh, play.leagueoflegends.com uh, Download the game, start playing some bots games, uh, start learning about the game. It's a great game to get involved with, fantastic eSport as well if you find a, yes. a great talent for it. And maybe you uh, or your high school at home if you're uh, not involved or don't know uh, that anything about the High School League of Legends League next season, definitely come and get involved. As we see the Baron Siege coming to a head in this mid lane, a nice little hook. Here comes that final spark, a huge double kill for Meow, taking down multiple members of Kumra, and this is the Floodgates blown open. Digital D-Star, Ender Gamer, Master Masood all out of the fight. It is all up to Ward, Brother, and Ulti, but there is not much the two can do. There is the ace. That will be the game. Sunshine Coach, get it done just past that 35 minute mark. Yeah, what a long game as well. One of the longest ones, most competitive games we've seen on the Echo. Fantastic effort from both sides. And Sunshine Coast Grandma pick up their first win on stage and their first win on the day. Yeah, I mean, it definitely was a tough fight. Kumara did not make it easy through that laning phase. However, when it came down to those team fights, when it came down to those individual outplay moments, it was all meow all the time. Yeah, I definitely say if we give it out MVP and Ace, you got to be MVP over to Meow. And on the other side, it's much more. I'd probably say it's Ulti. I think Ulti and, yes. uh, Ulti and Meow are definitely the two best players for either side. Mm -hmm. uh, Meow, obviously, MVP from both games. And, and Ulti uh, wasn't necessarily. Oh, he was, he he was, was in fine. consideration. No, he was, I think he was yeah, in consideration was, for the first game. It was him and Ward Brother. Yes. Uh, but I definitely think Ulti this game uh, deserves that MVP for the team. Yeah, Ulti, like, his laning phase was phenomenal. Unfortunately, yeah. was unable to take it over to that later game. But. Really, this was the Meow Show. Those final sparks coming out of this Lux were on point time and time again. Multiple targets, multiple kills, just pure domination. Yeah, precisely, and we believe that will be, uh, sorry, end, end our fourth game, but we have our fifth game coming up. It's going to be a really exciting game as well. Chisholm versus Indrapilia, two teams, Ooh. two winners uh, as well today. So Indrapilia look very dominating, and Chisholm, of course, always a solid side. Uh, obviously, round of 16. Uh, mm -hmm. finishes as well so it's going to be a very competitive match so we'll be our uh, starting around 25 minutes so make sure you guys uh, stick around for that or, or go and make sure you come back uh, if you're watching online as well nice time to get some food maybe yeah uh, play a game of uh, TFT but make sure you're back here to watch this because it's going to be a fantastic game live at the Echo yeah so please do not go too far we will be right back and remember Ward save lives <laughs> 